Hello everyone. Today we will understand catalase test. In this particular video, I'll explain the principle behind the catalase test, why it is used in microbiology, what is the application of catalase test, what are the steps that you require to follow the catalase test, and what are the, some of the precautions while doing this particular test. Right? So I'll explain all those important points and uh, I'll try to explain all the mechanisms at the same time and also tell you some of the important points while I'm explaining this particular essay. So, all right, without any delay, let's start the video. All right, let's understand the test called catalase test. In catalase test, the first point that comes is what kind of test it is. It's a biochemical test. That means uh, you are detecting biomolecules and in this case you will be detecting the enzyme called catalase enzyme. And what it does, what chemical reaction it, it performs is basically the breakdown of H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide into water molecules and oxygen molecules. So it can differentiate. The application of this test is to differentiate the bacteria. And you can say the organism is catalase positive, means bacteria is producing catalase or catalase negative. And let's write down the detailed uh, equation where two molecules of H2O2 in presence of catalase will produce two molecules of water plus one molecule of oxygen and there will be bubble production because you have oxygen molecules that are going to release. So you can say on presence of those uh, those bubbles will directly indicate that there is gas production and you can say the test is positive. Now let's move on to the second part of this test which is the procedure. So I'll tell you all the steps. Step number one is preparation of 3% H2O2 solution. This should be prepared in a clean uh, clean container. And second one is using sterile loop. You need uh, bacterial colonies. So you can have a plate where you have multiple colonies of bacteria and you use sterile loop to pick up a specific colonies. And then you can uh, use glass slide. So the next step is to transfer the colony onto a clean glass slide. So suppose this is your glass slide and you have to transfer the colony on a drop of water or normal saline so that you can perform the experiment. Now. You need to observe for uh, the bubble production after adding H2O2 solution or you can add H2O2 solution before and then add colonies. In both cases formation of bubbles should occur and that will indicate the, the presence of oxygen means the reaction is positive. So this will indicate the reaction is positive and you can say the sample that you've been given is positive for catalyst production. So this is the brief procedure where you have multiple steps. Step one is preparation of H2O2 solution, which is 3% solution. It should be clean and you, you need to store this, uh, this solution very, very carefully. And I'll talk about the conditions also. Then you will use the bacteriological loop to transfer the colonies, mix it with H2O2 solution. If there are bubble formation, then you can say the reaction is positive. Now let's move on to the third part of this particular test. Okay, the next part of this test is how you analyze the results. So there are two conditions. First one is when the reaction is positive. So in that case, what will happen? You will have bubble production into the glass slide or you can you can have those bubbles into the react, in, in the reaction. You can say catalase is produced by the bacteria and it performs the reaction. Second one is reaction is negative. No bubble production will be there. Hence, uh, there is no catalase enzyme that has been produced. So next point is, it's very, very important to have positive controls as well as negative control Control in your uh, experiment. Positive control can be something that will produce the catalase enzyme for sure. And uh, you can use the organisms that is known or you have a bacterial strain that is known to produce the catalase reaction or even you can have a catalase enzyme solution so that you can see how the reaction is going to work out. Next one, negative control that doesn't produce any any catalase enzyme. So in that case, you can just use water as negative control or any other solution where you don't have any kind of bubble production. So make sure that you're using positive and negative controls in your reaction. Now let's talk about the significance, which is very, very important. So the significance of this test is to identify or differentiate microorganisms. The example is you can identify staph species because staph species, they're catalase positive from streptococcus organisms, streptococcus species that are catalase negative. So on blood agar, if you have plates you can uh, and you have colonies, you can differentiate based on catalase uh, reaction. Second one is, it can also differentiate between aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria uh, because you have catalase reaction and you can say catalase is positive and catalase is negative. So you have anaerobic bacteria and uh, aerobic bacteria giving different types of catalase reactions. So this test is very, very important in microbiology. You can differentiate organisms very, very quickly because reaction is very quick. 
Catalyst reaction is very fast where you see the bubble production immediately. And then from H2O2, you can produce uh, water molecules as well as oxygen molecules. Based on that, you can differentiate organisms. Staphylococcus species, definitely catalyst positive. Streptococcus, catalyst negative. These can be used also as, as, as you know, you can use them positive control and negative control in this case, right? Uh, because they are, they are known. And you can use specific strains because uh, this is important that uh, if you're using a bacteria, you need to know what is the strain that you're using. So that will be your you know, proper procedure uh, that will be uh, a kind of a prop proper process to perform this particular reaction. All right, moving to the last part, which is precautions. You need to be careful while handling H2O2 solution because it's highly, highly strong oxidizing agent. It can cause skin irritation. So while preparing this, you need to be careful. Second one, H2O2 needs to be freshly prepared. You need to prepare it. Fresh solution, you need to have fresh solution of H2O2. And then you need to observe very, very carefully and then avoid getting the results that are maybe false positive results because of evaporation. So you need to differentiate between positive as well as negative reactions. That is why using controls is a very good idea so that you can differentiate between what is actual positive and what is actual negative reaction. So three important points. One, you need to be very, very careful while handling H2O2. Second one, it should be fresh. Otherwise, what will happen? You will get false negative results, right? Maybe it was positive, but, but H2O2 is not fresh, so you can get a negative results. Third one, how you observe the reaction. It's very important. You have to be very, very careful. You need to mix it properly. And then if you have some results, you need to differentiate between what is evaporation and what is bubble production. So these are the, some, these are the important points that you need to remember, and this is how this test is done. I hope in a quick way, I have given you the summary of catalyst test. I'll bring out more videos like this so that uh, you should be able to understand the biochemical tests. If you like the video, then please hit the like button and do let me know if you want more videos, more such videos. I'll be happy to create more videos on the topic that you like. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll meet in the next one.